Welcome back to day five of the 100 horror films in 31 days. I got in four films, so I'm on I'm on target right now. First up, I watched a shot on video film from the 80s, The Wood Chipper Massacre, 1988. Oh man, <clears throat> directed and produced, I believe, by John McBride. He also, I think, acted in it for like 400 bucks. And it's basically, it looks like a film that's shot at his maybe his house or a relative's house. Uh, it's got a lot of um, footage of Honda, eight, 1980s Honda Civics pulling out of the driveway, going down the street, pulling into the driveway, then pulling out again. Um, yeah, there's not much wood chipping going on, and there's definitely not any massacres going on. Uh, there's basically one kill that was a used a wood chipper but and all the kills are off off screen there's nothing they didn't have the money for effects so they just cut away before the kill happens the acting is rough almost it's almost the point of fun to watch but it's aunt the girl aunt tess this lady named patricia that mcbride who plays aunt tess is just so fucking annoying oh my god i was so glad when she died um, anyway, I, I mean, I appreciate the attempt. They didn't put a lot of money in it. I see they had their heart. They tried. They they put they put their heart into it. Uh, there's just not much here to to be positive about. I am going to give it a four out of ten, though. I'm going to give it a four out of ten for the effort. But that's about it. All right. Next up is uh, 1971's Blood Legacy or Legacy of Blood directed by Carlos Carl Monson who also did Savage Harbor and this stars J John Carradine and Faith Demerick who uh, Faith Demerick was in a bunch of 1950s science fiction films if, if people remember she's also I think she was um, in the Cobra Woman uh, it's basically a uh, an, an inheritance murder inheritance story, and I, I don't know what it is, but lately I've watched a, a bunch of those films, starting with, of course, the Andy Milligan Gassy ones, this, and this and this plays like a lot better version of the Gassy ones. Basically, it's a family fortune at, at stake. John Carradine has died; he's left four hairs his fortune, but but one of his stipulations is. They have to spend the night in the house for a week with each other, and of course, you know that what that leads to people getting killed. Uh, I actually like this movie pretty good. Um, I, I I thought it was uh, well acted, and uh, some of the kills were interesting. So I gave it a six out of ten. I would I would definitely recommend if you're interested in the inheritance murder genre subgenre, you might want to check it out. Okay, next up, and both those, by the way, were on YouTube. Um, next up, 1944's, and this is the final film, House of Frankenstein, 1944. Uh, House of Dracula is on here too, but I'm going to wait and go through the Dracula set. I'll catch it then. But um, House of Frankenstein is one of the two monster mashups, House of Dracula being the other one, and of course... Abbott and Costello was the comedy version of them. But basically you've got um, the Wolfman, the Hunchback, the Mad Scientist, Frankenstein, all in this 70 minutes of breezy kid-like monster kid fun. Um, I think uh, it's, you know, it is what it is. It's just a, it's just a fun turn your brain off 70 minutes. Uh, Boris Karloff actually plays the Mad Scientist in this one. <laughs> And of course, Lon always playing the werewolf. He does a fantastic job. It's it's a lot of fun. Good film. I give it a seven out of ten. And then finally, I watched on the Scream Factory release here, A Stranger Is Watching, 1982, Sean Cunningham's uh, second directorial film after Friday the Thirteenth. And this one is uh, this one's based on a novel. I believe Mary, um, uh, shoot, I forgot the novelist's name, Mary Hawkins, or, but essentially you've got a murder for murder or kidnapping for ransom story, 
the film this film kind of sets up to kind of be a surprise by killing off the mother with the kid watching the kill in the first scene um, and then she pins the murder on somebody but did she get the right murderer that's the question um, I thought this film kind of lacked any kind of real surprise or suspense uh, Rip Torn was fantastic as the murderer the kidnapper I very much enjoyed his performance but other than that I think this is kind of a uh, forgettable entry in the from the 80s which is a shame but uh, it it just doesn't have any kind of oomph to it I gave it a, it's not a bad film I'm not saying that I give it a 6 out of 10 this um, has an interview with Sean Cunningham which um, which was interesting but that's about it and it's got a new scan of the film okay that's going to wrap it up for day 5 I appreciate you watching